Good evening, folks, and welcome to Inside and Consolidated Channel 18. As always, I'm your host, Brock White. Joining me the Dick Express is Dustin Monkey. Dustin, how are you? Not too bad. Good. Good. Joining us today in studio, James Musso, the director of Dickens or Kildeer Parks, Kildare and, Rec. Parks and Rec. Can stumble in today a little bit here. Kildeer Parks and Rec. Talk about the new aquatic wellness center up there yeah. and all the big changes for Park and Rec in Kildeer and Absolutely. what to expect Lots in the future. Lots going on up in Kildeer, not there. just a hailstorm. They, the aquatic center survived the hailstorm. That's right. And our buddy we'll Moose, more, Moose yeah. we call Moose. him, is a busy man up there for yep. sure. Works 100 Definitely. hours a week up in Kildare. That's right. He claims. So. <laughs> but he justifies it pretty well. That's right. That's right. <laughs> As always, we kick things off with a look at the week in review, the biggest stories from the week before. And, of course, one on the tip of our tongue, as has been the past, I don't know, six months, Dustin, has been a special session. It's, yep. it's going right now. The budget's being looked over. And Governor Dalrymple proposes another round of cuts across the board. Knock on wood, it's done by tonight. We're Obviously, yeah. we're filming this on Wednesday. You guys see this on Thursday night for the first time. So knock on wood, it's done yep. by the time you guys are watching this. But who knows? I mean, they're, they're allotting three days for it. Started Tuesday, should wrap up Thursday. Should. Um, but there's going to be a lot of committee meetings going along with this. You know, Kelly Armstrong talked about that with us last week, and Rich has talked about that with me separately, that, you know, once they get down there, once they get all together, there's more than just the budget cuts that's go that goes on. Yeah. That's going to happen. I'm sure they'll come to a decision. They'll, they'll come to some, some sort of a resolution on that. But it's just the little things that happen behind the scenes in committee uh, and, and places like that to get things, you know, they kind of go a long way. Sure. So. So a 300 and what is the shortfall? 309, 60 million, something like that. Uh, don't put that million. on my head. 300 plus million. 300 plus million. That's 300 we'll plus million. Say 300 plus million. And they're looking at get, uh, getting 100 million from the Bank of North Dakota. Right. And then the 2.5 percent cuts. Point, except for the the, the two uh, departments that Health and Human Services. Yes. Uh, won't be cut. Uh, that won't have to endure that extra 2.5 percent, and I believe Department of Corrections is good to go. And as that's well. in addition to the the previous cuts right. made back in, this is in April. Addition. So like DSU. Uh, Department of Ag, Department of um, Mineral Resources, sure. whatever, they all have to make another 2.5% cut. So basically any state-funded department where employees are states, or state of North Dakota employees, another 2.5% cut. So that doesn't sound like much, but for some of these departments, they have a pretty a rather large budget, and you know cuts have to be made, period. Yeah. So. Well, it's the only way we do it now. There's no other option right. at this point. And, uh, the, the shortfall is, is far greater than expected, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just the unfortunate reality of the uh, the economy in North Dakota at the moment. It is, and I think, you know, we've talked about this before too, but, <laughs> you know, yeah, we're going through cuts, we're tightening the belt. Mm -hmm. Could you just imagine if the United States actually operated like the, the state same of North way Dakota do. yeah. does, where we actually had to Instead balance of that budget? Printing, printing fake money and borrowing yeah, from other countries. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We wouldn't be in debt to China, Russia, wherever we're in debt to right now, Saudi Arabia, who knows? But. It's nice to see that we are a fiscally conservative, conservative and we mean fiscally it. intelligent yeah. state enough that, hey, we overspent, now we got to cut. Yeah. Sorry. And no matter you what know. kind of mudslinging is being thrown in before the primaries about overspending, runaway yeah. spending, and those things, a lot of that spending was pretty necessary for infrastructure in the a state. A lot of it was. A lot of it was. Yeah, a lot of it was. There um, was a few glaring here and there. Right. But, like, yeah. I, like I've said before, you know, let's uh, maybe not rebuild 100, 100 miles of North Dakota interstate every summer every summer <laughs> let's maybe you know yeah. we could have done without one or two bypasses here for a for a couple of years yeah. now but when they approved those we couldn't do without those bypasses and mm -hmm. that's what people see we're eating flame mignon every night yeah now we're hot dogs we're, that's your, that's I love that's, yeah. your, that's your analogy so yeah. you're not you're not wrong it's, it's how it goes yeah so. definitely uh it's in town a little bit of a snafu uh <laughs> klj working on the new water tower and uh they got their plans mixed up and the zoning codes mixed up, and they, and they built it too tall. So too what big. happened was, and it's easier to explain in person here yeah. than it is in my story that I wrote. It just it's one of those it seems like, where we have water zones in town mm -hmm. where the water is it's just determined by elevation. Yes, correct. So when you build a water tower, the pressure has to go up the water tower to pump it back down. You know, the water has to pump up into the water tower in order to be pressured to the zone back down specs. to yeah. your house yeah. or to wherever, to the bathrooms, yeah. wherever. Now, what happened was a simple engineering error. It's not like a guy forgot to carry a zero or something, some mundane detail like yeah. that. No, it, what, what happened was a KLJ engineer accidentally use the wrong zone use the wrong zone to determine yeah. the height of how tall this should be and it got to the point where no one caught the error until it was built yeah 
which is, you know, KLJ, to their credit. They came to the city came, commission meeting. Came, came to the city hat in hand. Yeah. And was they admitted their error, said they're going to fix it, they're going to absorb all the costs, they're going to pay for it. Um, you know, and I'm sure they're dealing with their own internally, you know, some issues. The city has made them go back and say, okay, every project you're working on, let's double check it, let's peer sure. review it, sure. make sure everything is fine. And it sounds like that's fine, this was just one error, but... It's coming pretty, with a pretty very, good track record. Oh, and yeah, yeah. oh yeah, I mean, KLJ has got a, one of the best engineering firms in the country, yes. so it's not like... It's not like these. It's not like there's some small outfit that's yeah. making errors all the time. No, it's, you know, they're they're one of the best. So it is. So have they, have they gotten to the nuts and bolts of how they're going to shorten this thing yet? Okay, so it's 151 feet. We'll say 150 yeah. feet and change. Uh, they have to shorten it down to 72 feet. That's a big cut. So it's going to cut it in half, basically. How do you spend the globe and, and take it down and bring it down? Oh, the same way as you put it up, I think. You, know, you just get it up there, it? cut it off, and oh wow, I, that's basically what it would be. It's going to look a lot different. That's for oh, yeah. Scott Decker's comment. Right now, it booms over the the, the area. The, you can yeah, see you it. You can from, see it coming yeah. once you pop over that. You, well, before you the pop west over end the interstate, there, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Um, before you pop over the hill on the interstate, but now, yeah, I took it. It's funny. We ran that water tower twice in the paper on Sunday and Tuesday because a for the for a story on water issues <coughs> in our city yes. on Sunday, and then B for the, uh, the story, yeah. story on Tuesday. It's a very popular water tower right now, yeah. Yeah, and it, boy, it was a social media hit, this story. Well, anyone you know, likes to take a chance to pounce when anyone does something wrong and right. make his, makes yeah. a goof, and yeah. Yep, so yeah. hopefully, you know, we'll get this thing fixed. They want to have it done, painted, working by the end of the year. And honestly, they had two options. One was to install a bunch of pump systems. Yeah, trigger the like pressure that. right to bring it up and down, yeah. and. KLJ said they've talked to several different municipalities throughout the upper Midwest, especially those in Montana that have a lot of elevation change sure. issues and stuff like that, and they could not guarantee that that would even work. So well, cutting this thing in half On top of that, too, the maintenance is, of that system as oh, well yeah. then, too. Yeah, that's, and that was Extended brought up cost. in the state commission meeting, too, yeah. was the maintenance. So hopefully, you know, the next, uh, by the end of the year, this thing is done. Sure. Well, we'll see. We'll keep an eye on things over there, and hopefully they get it all rectified and fixed. And, yeah. uh be more to keep your eyes on in the West End over there, yeah, for sure, I definitely. Uh, recently, it's been a hot, hot button issue for a while, but now it's right. come back to the forefront. A U.S. District Court judge ruled that the, the voter ID laws are, are ruled discriminatory in North Dakota. Yes, and yeah. uh, U.S. District Judge Daniel Hovland ruled that um, it basically stemmed from a lawsuit from the Chippewa Band of Indians up in Turtle Mountain Reservation. Yes. Um, basically, what they're saying is they were had they had some people who would be disenfranchised based on some of the laws that have recently been passed in North Dakota about voter ID. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy state to vote in, one way or another. Incredibly easy, maybe one of the easiest Probably in too the nation. easy, too yeah. easy. I'm of the mind that, hey, perhaps it's time for voter, voter registration. registration. I'm the same with you. You know, especially after this last election with the whole Burgum Stangem thing Crossing and all party that lines. stuff, it wouldn't have mattered, but at least people wouldn't have had that argument. There'd be no doubt. There would be no doubt. Yeah. Independents could have voted for whoever they wanted. Yep. Republicans vote along your line. Democrats vote along your line. That's just the Stay way that almost every other Register state does your party. It. You know, we are a growing state. I mean, there is a, there is that assumption that in the next, you know, 20, 30 years, we could hit a million people. Especially if the oil comes back, which it's not right now. You know, today mm -hmm. it's 40 bucks a barrel still, but it's still in the ground. They're going to get it sometime. But things yeah. happen quickly. We know that. So if that comes back, you're going to see this population boom here again. We could get to that million people, especially with with the east east side of east side of the state and you know the Silicon Valley Junior over there and and Drone Valley, whatever you want to call it. If that booms like they're expecting it to in the next yeah. in a few years here. You know, we we could have, you know, we could have a state that's approaching that one million population, especially as life expectancy holds up a little bit more too. I mean, everybody forgets about that little nugget. But I'm digressing. The point is that it's not a bad thing to start looking into voter registration for the state. You know, I know some people are totally against that. I, I feel like it's time. I think it just makes sense. It, yep. it, it has for decades. You're, and, you're registered to vote anyway yep. by being a, by being a resident of the state of North Dakota. Yep. It, if as long as the as long as the state would institute something that made it extremely streamlined for you to do, go online or do whatever you got to do. Your, yeah. If you can do it via on your, your phone, phone or your whatever, iPad, your computer. There's going to be a group of people that says, "Oh, I can't do that either." Blah well, blah blah. And it's I like, would say 80% of our population can do that. Yes, I would say more than that. Yeah. And it's not very far to your local library house or library or wherever. Yeah. If every city, even small town of 100 people, set up something where people could come in for a month and yeah. 
register to vote, we could get this thing done in a year. Easily. So, easily. Like, I, I think you're, I'm with you, like I said, uh, it's, it's a little too lax to vote in this yeah, state, absolutely. I think. And, and that would be a, a great step forward, I think, for North Dakota, for yeah. sure. All right, uh, we'll go take a quick, quick commercial break and come back with our guest in studio, James Mousseau, the director of Kildeer Parks and Rec. Consolidated is committed to providing advanced network systems and service to the business world. Staying ahead of the curve by offering digital technology with voice over IP, Ethernet circuits, hosted telephone systems, as well as cloud-based networking. GNET Fiber Technology allows us to offer internet speeds up to 1 gig, making your network more efficient. Our sales and technical team take pride in providing state-of-the-art service to our customers. At Consolidated, we're here to listen and offer the most efficient solutions for your business. All right, folks, welcome back to Inside here in Channel 18. Joining us today in studio, the director of Kildeer Parks and Rec, Mr. James Mousseau. James, thanks for joining us today. Nice to see you guys. Pleasure's, yeah. pleasure's all ours, man, for sure. <laughs> so there's some big things happening with Kildeer Parks and Rec. So you guys just unveiled and opened your brand new multi-million aquatics and wellness center. How awesome is that for the community? Uh, really, really great. You know, uh, we had that storm that came through yeah. and we opened that same week and it was, it was a bummer. You know, that Sunday, the storm hit Monday, um, I think between me and my our public works director, we each had about 150 calls each wow. for trees that were down, parks sure. were destroyed. I mean, it was crazy. And we, we sat down and said, are we going to do this on Friday or not? Yes, let's do it. <laughs> let's open it's, her up. It's yeah. a beacon. Yep. You know, it's a it's something to take pride in. Yeah. And it was it was really good. It, it was really well received. And you guys didn't have much damage to the actual building, right? No, most of it was cosmetic and it was on facing the west side. Mm -hmm. But the windows we put in there, I mean, that was my first thought is I got to go Gone. up there and check yeah. the windows. Yeah. <laughs> they were fine. And it was oh, just amazing. Yep. The only thing that took damage, substantial damage, was our air condition units. Oh, and those yeah. will have to be replaced through insurance. Sure. But other than that, I mean, the building held up. So awesome. That's great. Yeah. So this That's is a, a giant pool, aerobic center, workout rooms, we, a, a special meeting room, right? The whole works. Yeah. We, yeah. We basically we were talking before the show. We basically called it a, a smaller version of the West River Community Center, right? And, I mean, and yeah, and I agreed. I mean, it really is. We have a community room that holds up to sixty-one people in there. Okay. It's got a TV on the wall, really nice counter sink. The birthday parties, meetings. Yeah, that we've kind already of stuff. hosted, I think, two birthday parties. We have oh, one. Great. We have another one mm -hmm. tonight. So that's <laughs> great. Um, and then the pool, ninety-three thousand gallon pool. It's got a zero entry for the little kids with yeah. play features, and then the lap lanes, which is zero entry is great. I love it. We we go to the, our pool here no in the all the time. <laughs> no, yeah, no ladders. Little guy, and it's just it, it's great for the for the little kids. You yes. get the little ones involved, and I'm sure Kildare has kind of a a burgeoning population of little ones now and, too. And that's what's you know when we started the baseball program. Um, you know, this summer, mm -hmm. I saw that. I saw the kids come out, and kids that I had never seen before. And sure. it, was, it was a huge indication. So, yeah, you get the kids that start in the zero entry, and they tiptoe in, and they, yeah. come, they run yeah. out, they tiptoe. But it's also great for, um, you know, we have an older population still. Mm -hmm. They get in that way. You don't have yeah. to get down through a ladder. It's a safer way to get in. They get in, they do their water aerobics. Right. So. You touched on the baseball program this summer starting up. Yeah. That's another part of what Killer Parks and Rec are doing. You guys are expanding your, your recreational activities in the summer, right? Yes, yeah. So, you know, our, our park board has been a little inactive for the last five years just because with the oil boom, yeah. I mean, they, mm -hmm. the baseball fields got bulldozed. Yeah. <laughs> so there was no baseball fields. But, it, it, you know, really when I got brought on, it was it was about getting, getting the park board kind of off of their hands let's start bringing in and really nobody had any idea that we had so many young families sure but when i had baseball signups i had 110 kids that's from, great from, for children that's four, that's yep, ages four yeah. to twelve and wow. that is a ton and there was a ton of kids that couldn't play because they had already summer plans mm -hmm. like sure so, um yeah youth baseball is, was really good really good success and, and we were looking at you know i'm looking at tons of other programs to do you know uh so softball adult softball leagues because again that young those young families, young right. husbands and wives are there and they, they want to do something in Kildare. You know? yeah. Yeah. You know? And that's what's great about opening the aquatic center is now I've had so many people come in, even even the transient population that's passing through right. or working on the pipe. Wow. You know, we wish we had something this nice in our hometown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and finally something to do. You know, yeah. it's just great. And it, so well received and every day people come in and give compliments and it's just like, wow, you guys help do this. You know, the community helped do it. So yeah. really they gotta pat themselves on the back. What are some of the future plans for Parks and Rec up in Gilder? So some of the future stuff, and actually I just I just made a list this week <laughs> <laughs> of what I want to do. Um, you know, we're looking at doing, we have the High Plains Cultural Center right. in Kildare. We're looking at doing possibly a dodgeball tournament uh -huh. on a weekend. Yeah. Because, I mean, what's better than that? Anybody mm -hmm. can do it. Yeah. A lot of fun. Bring in some people. All in ages. Yeah, yeah, all ages. Um, we're looking at doing 
uh, co-ed volleyball, co-ed basketball, maybe mm -hmm. a men's league. There already is kind of people that throw together something, but let's make it official. Let's sure. yeah. let's give you something that you can, you know, a league schedule, right. league standings, you know, keep the score. And so we're really getting into that kind of stuff for the winter. And then next year we're going to try to do try to do the adult softball, probably just co-ed for right now. Sure. And then, um, youth baseball again. And then um, the conference that we're in with Bowman and New England, and mm -hmm. they're talking about doing like little girl softball. Oh, wow. Ponytail yep. softball. And, you know, it's offered here in Dickinson, but for those communities, they just, you know, it's hard to drive all the time. Yeah. So, you know, why not offer it? And we pull a lot of people from Halliday, Grassy Butte, um, Dunn Center, mm -hmm. you know, all over the rural right. community. So it's... It's just really there, basically. There is nothing between you guys, Watford City, yeah. and Newtown. I'm Andoree, but... That's about it. You know, yeah. that's, so when you go north of Kildare, there's such an open space there. Yeah. And, you know, like, Watford City's building that huge facility, mm -hmm. yeah. which I haven't got to see yet, but everybody's like, you got to go up there and see it. Yep. We're in between. So people, if they can't make that option work, yeah. they can't make the rec work. Well, for a yeah. community your right. size, that's yeah. a, you have a Absolutely. heck of an establishment up there. You really oh, yeah. do. For, for Kildare, that's fantastic. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a really, everybody's asked me, it's just a huge point of pride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for the whole community, and it so, really br improves quality of life in a community that size too. And that's my biggest thing. That's kind of why I came home. Yeah, <laughs> is to is to kind of build that back. You know, I mean, right. with the oil boom coming through, like you said, everybody was so busy. Well, now it's kind of it's kind of subsided, and we have the people that are going to be there. Well, mm -hmm. let's give the kids something to do. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's give people something. To young do. families reap, touch the, bene young reap families, the benefits yeah. of what's yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah, and of course health and wellness has always been a big thing for me yep. and so it's it's nice i mean there's a there's a ambulance 5k that park and rec is helping with but it's not it's not our 5k sure but the ambulance is doing august right. 12th and that's great it's going to dark run 5k start at the golf course nice. zoom into town end at our new park we built a brand new baseball complex mm -hmm. so to speak and and there and how cool is that i mean yeah. that's just, great it's yeah. just a nice more things to do yeah you know yep. go for a walk or run it or whatever you want to mm -hmm. do so. yeah so give us, uh, where can people get some information about the center they can call? You got a Facebook website? Yep. We got a, so Kildare Parks and Rec, I developed a Facebook page Kay. for that. Um, it was just the simplest thing at the time. Or they can they can call right up to the pool, 701-764-5032. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's the old pool number, actually. Okay. <laughs> the old outdoor pool number? Yeah, so yeah. it's just funny. People, is this the outdoor pool? Well, that's <laughs> kind of. That's gone. So, be, yeah. yeah, they can call up there and, and talk to either me or um And you guys offer of monthly people. passes, season yep. passes? Yep. So if they want information on that, they can look again on the Facebook page sure. or just call up there. And we do the monthly. We do a monthly, a three-month, and a year Okay. Right. for um, senior, adult, youth. Awesome. And then for our families, we have a three-month package and an annual package. Okay. So. Fantastic. And we were kind of joking about this during the break. You kind of wear many hats, too, up there. I mean, you're... You're you're the one you're you're not the one like sorting <laughs> through the bills, are you? I mean, are you um, you're the accountant? Paying the invoices? No, no, not yet. Yeah, quite but, that. But well, one of the one of the great things about moving back to a small community, and you guys are from a small yeah. community, yeah. so you can relate. Is yeah. as soon as I got back there, I got my hands on as many things as I could. So I got mm -hmm. on the Lions Club. Yep. And we have a small contingency of Lions. I'm the vice president there. I got on the fire department, <laughs> which is awesome. I mean, to get that extra training, yeah, you know, fire stuff, and it's been really interesting. So. Um, I think as we develop, we'll have people that will step up and take those different roles. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you just, if you want a community to improve, you got to put in the work. And right. Yeah. I'm always willing to do that. So it's it's just great to be home and great to help the community. It's Especially awesome. when you're passionate about it. Absolutely. It makes the work a little easier. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. People are like, you're going to burn out. You're going to burn out. Well, you'll never burn out when you do something. Yeah, you used to run, when, yeah. you used to run, you used to run half marathons. Yeah, so I mean, you're, you're fine. <laughs> well, I just, I look at all the great coaches or great people in the world. They don't burn out because they love what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. And I love what I'm doing. So it's like 100 hours a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes it worth it when you see a kid leave the, leave the aquatic center and he says, this is, this is fun. This yeah. was all worth yeah. it. And they smile. And you're like, all right. Yeah. Good. I can get up tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's yep, great. That's, that's great. So, that's yeah. awesome. Well, James, thanks for coming on today, man. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and, and congratulations on the big, uh, the big opening. Oh, that's you. great for the yeah. community. You bet. Yeah. It was an honor to be here with you guys. Ah, I've yeah. waited. I've waited for this. <laughs> You've watched well, every show you play. Yes, every yes, show. I have. I have. We'll I've, have I've you on down the road again for sure. I bet. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Right. The more things expand, the more to talk about and kill. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Awesome. Nice. We'll come back after this with a look at the week ahead right here on Insight. A bundle from Consolidated is your local choice for internet, TV, and phone at a better value. Our internet is now faster than ever with GNET technology. Get affordable, consistent speeds now up to 1 gig. 
Our state-of-the-art TV connections deliver more HD choices and convenient DVR options, including TiVo. Our local phone service keeps you in touch for less, all backed by exceptional 24-hour support. Make the local choice for a better value by bundling. Call or visit Consolidated online today. All right, folks, welcome back to Inside Time. Look, time for a look at the week ahead. I'm just stumbling today. You're stumbling. I got a lot in mind. It's a big week for me here. <laughs> but uh, look at the week ahead. The big story is coming up this week. Uh, one that a lot of residents are happy to see was it was part of the city commission meeting this past week. Citywide recycling might get a real look right now, a real, a real chance. Yeah. And we're going to be covering that this weekend a little bit. Uh, city. The curbside service. Yeah. Sydney actually is going to take over. We, you know, we lost Andrew Hafner to Grand Forks, so Sydney's going to take over our city beat for the short time here. Um, she's working on a story right now about she came to the meeting with me on Monday to just check it out. And sure. The story she wants to handle off of that, and I, I saw it was a bigger story anyway, was the city is looking into what are the costs to get us a all, all of the above recycling program yes. here in Dickinson. There are 6,200 households that in the city that would take that would have to have a recycling bin. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't remember exactly what it is, but your plastics, your aluminum, mm -hmm. uh, your cardboard, all of this would go into the same tub. Uh, and then the city sorts. Tub. Well, the city doesn't sort it. They send it. They would send it to a Company sorting facility in Shakopee, Minnesota. I think which it'd is, be really easy to yeah. get people sign up for that, I think. Oh, I think everybody. At least, at least 7,000 well, households. It wouldn't be a sign-up thing. It would be mandatory. Yeah, but I think, I think be, people would adapt They're to talking equipment. about like how much it would cost right now, and it sounds like you go to Starbucks once a month, boom, there's your there's your price yeah. to pay for recycling. Yeah. So if you buy a cup of coffee once a month, you know, a fancy cup of coffee, and that's let's, all it costs. Five bucks. And then it's this thing, too, uh, the, you know, the, the, the nuts and bolts of it kind yeah. of. Uh, young families. Oh, 30 and under, 35 and under. I make a lot more, of trips. They're more, we're more conscious about recycling than, than, than an older generation is. I bet sure. every other week I make a trip to the uh, recycling bins to dump cardboard or newspaper yeah. or whatever. Um, you know, grass clippings, you know, tree, tree clippings, whatever. That would be great for the city to get curbside and service like We that. would still have to dump. We wouldn't be able to dispose of, like, the, the grass clippings No, but like, like you that. said, but your, plastic, glass, yes, aluminum, right. cardboard. Anything that can be recycled, One bin, with, yes. in addition to your trash can. Same, easy, it would be the simple. same as what Bismarck and Mandan has. That would be great. But here in Dickinson, they would send it to the same place. So we're working on that story. Uh, it, it's a good idea, and I'm, I'm for it. I'm Thumbs all for up. it. Um, I, you know, it's kind of interesting. My, uh, my brother lives in... Uh, small town, small suburb, kind of on the outer suburbs in Minneapolis. And he came here and stayed with us once, and he's like, "Hey, where's your where's your recycling tub?" And I'm like, "We don't have about? we don't have yeah. one." Like we put paper in it's that. Man. We put paper in that. We put cardboard in the garage, and I take it to the dump. He goes, "You don't have a recycling program in a city of 25,000 people?" <laughs> and I'm like, "He goes, we have a recycling program in a city of 3,000 people." Yeah, sign so of the times. exactly, and I think it's time mm -hmm. that you know Dickinson does look into that. And the big thing, and I think that came out of that meeting, was that it will help the city dump last longer like the, oh probably the, yeah. the landfill will it only, last it only makes sense. much longer so yeah, you'd be taking millions of pounds of refuge yearly and moving them elsewhere yes exactly yeah, definitely not refuge refuse I'm sorry refuse. yeah <laughs> tongue tied today it's my not my day today uh the you had a story <laughs> coming up last week it moved this week about the uh the new wind the yep. wind towers where does the wind go yep kelsey went down and visited basin electric i talked about this a little bit last week if you're a loyal viewer the new wind farms um, she went down to bismarck visited with basin about talking about how the how the wind is generated where it goes and basin tells us exactly where this power is going to be distributed to so that'll be a really interesting story i won't give too much away like kelsey just wasn't happy with where the story was at on last weekend so we held it so we go. do that sometimes artistic so. liberty Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it, it also, you know, helps that, you know, the wind towers are actually starting to not really yeah. go up south of town, but the roads are being built. They're getting further along. So she's talking with next year. Even following well. the next era wind charms drama uh, saga, <laughs> catch up on the, the new part of it now. Yeah. Yep. Where does the wind go? Absolutely. And Dustin, there's a, a couple things happening in, the, in Beach and Medora this weekend. There is the Champions Ride Saddle Bronx 60th yep. annual at right. the Home in the Range. It's a big I'll one. I'll be going to that. That's a monster. Back That's a on great sports. turnout as always. Yeah. I'm back on sports for the week. All right. Parker's on vacation. Uh, we got a new guy, Samuel Evers. Uh, he'll be covering DSU, but this weekend he's never covered rodeo. He's from the New England, uh, not my New England, North Dakota. He's from the, the, the big New England out on the East Coast. Oh. 
Um, he's from that area, and uh, cockies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's. I think he's a cockies. Cockies. Yeah, cockies. I think he's a Patriots. I think he's a Patriots fan. Touchdown, but, uh, Tommy. There we won't go. hold that against him. Yeah. But uh, we'll, I'll be going out to the Champion Drive Saddle Bronc match this weekend. Yeah. And, yeah, it's a great time. I love 60th it. 60th annual. It's a big one. Three yeah. hours. Yeah. Of, three hours of straight saddle bronc riding. It's, it, you can't ask. Some big dogs come for that one too. You get some big names. And it's there, a yeah. very interesting schedule this year because we we will have a story uh, for Saturday's paper about the PRCA and the Elite Rodeo Association, which took a lot of some of the better cowboys. Mm -hmm. uh, they're in this new association, or Elite Rodeo well, There was folks that wanted to leave Vegas and go to Florida and all these right. things, and so there's been some splits now. Well, it's basically now. to allow some of the better cowboys to uh, make the same amount of money in less rodeos. Sure. Uh, or at least have that opportunity to. So what happened there, though, is now this, the Champions Ride became a PCR, PRCA sanctioned event. It's a big one. So some it's of those guys can't get. come in to this rodeo, but we still have a bunch of good ones here. And that'll yeah. be, it'll be great. The Wright brothers are back. The whole, the whole Wright family, pretty much all of them is back. So come and watch them. And local guys like Dusty Hossauer and some sure. of the Montana, South Dakota guys that always show up here and seem to dominate. So There's an event happening in Medora that I knew nothing about. I'm not really big into the outdoor fitness scene. Um, but I, I, I heard this is a, for, yeah, could, how could you tell? <laughs> Who would guess? But I, I, uh, I, you told me all about this in the break. Uh, it's the Matahe 100. Yeah, uh, it's a 100 mile bike race from the north unit of Theodore Roosevelt National Park down into Medora. It ends inside of Medora as the, as the Matahe Trail That sounds ends. like awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, and you can go, tw they can go 25 miles, 50 miles, 75 miles, or the whole hundred. I mean, these people start in the early, early hours of the morning on Saturday, and they ride all day. The Tour de Medora. It is. It's the Tour de Medora. But they call it the Matahe 100. They pull yeah. in some of the best endurance cyclists and mountain bikers uh, throughout the entire country. And I'm sure there's some Because there's parts of that trail that, 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 don't, that don't mess around, I've been told, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's parts of that trail that you better be, you better know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, you know, there's... There are some places where you know you want to go up for a leisurely. You know, yeah, you can do that. Ride. But there's parts that. that are definitely oh, advanced. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I know there's some water crossings. There's all kinds of different stuff. So, it's a it's a cool cool event. It's hard for us to cover because it's tucked can't in the Badlands. There, yeah. You can't get out there unless we have a plane or something, which we really don't have the budget for. Harvey, but who knew? Harvey, yeah, Harvey, <laughs> get us a plane or at least a drone. Yeah. But uh, and they do that. I mean, this this group. They get that, drone footage and stuff. They get drone sure. footage of this. It's amazing. It's amazing footage. It's cool um, to watch, and it's cool to watch the bikers come in and into Medora after this long ride because it's exactly what sounds it is. like an awesome event. Could and, you imagine yeah. biking all the way from Dickinson to Bismarck? Well, probably Dickinson past Bismarck. On a on a mountain bike on the terrain of the Badlands. I wouldn't ride a bike for consolidated to Hardee's. You kidding me? <laughs> Come on, no way. Who are you, who are you fooling around here with? Uh, that's insane. Good to them. That's that's crazy. Good for them. That's yeah. great, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, hats off to whoever's doing Absolutely. the Monterey 100. So, so go into Medora, uh, you know, watch those bikers come in this weekend. If you're in Medora, they'll be coming in about yeah. mid-afternoon. I'll be at the Taffy Shop on Sunday. I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Taffy yeah. Shop. It's great. Good no, stuff. No monkey business this week. Right. We've had enough commentary, I think, today. And, uh, A little ad living for sure. Definitely. Absolutely. I want to thank our guest, James Mousseau, the director of Kildare Park and Rec, talking about the big, awesome, fancy new aquatic wellness center up there, yep. all the new activities, Absolutely. and the expanding wellness and uh, Park and Rec Department in, in Kildare, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a great thing for that city. Oh, definitely. It's a huge boon for a community that size. We'll see you guys next week right here on Insight.